Hello again. This is uh, Katie to NDS back with you to further talk about uh, helically loaded magnetic loop antennas. A uh, new design in magnetic loop antennas that I've come up with, and if you've seen my previous video, that was a, a preview to uh, more information that I'm going to give you. I have another contact we're going to try to make tonight, staying up a little late on 40 meters to see if we can contact the down under uh, down in Australia to uh, give you a real good idea of how these small loops work in comparison to a large full-size antenna. We're going to use the 80 through 30 meter loop tonight and uh, that's six foot in diameter once again and it's uh, five feet above the ground and we're going to compare it against a 390 foot off-center fed doublet antenna which is 2.8 full wavelengths long on 40 meters, and I've had quite good experience with it uh, working all over the world when the 40 meter band is open. So let's give it a try, and uh, hopefully we'll get some luck and make a contact tonight. See you soon. <laughs> Here we're listening to um, VK4TUX in the down under. You know, when he gets up with his Q saw, I'm going to attempt to work him with my six foot diameter 40 meter magnetic loop, which is uh, five feet above the ground. Kilo 8 November Delta Sierra standing by Adrian. Yes, that's Kilo 8, November Delta Sierra. K8MDS here in Cottonwood, Arizona. Adrian, we worked you a few weeks ago with this six foot magnetic loop. QSL? Kilo 8, November Delta Sierra. That's K8MDS, November Delta Sierra. The name is Rich, Cottonwood, Arizona, Adrian. Yeah, real good. Uh, you're coming in pretty good tonight. Uh, the problem is this, the static crashes are horrendous here, uh, Adrian. We're, uh, we're getting some uh, thunderstorms in the uh, valley here tonight. And the static crashes are about an S8, and you're running a little bit over an S9, so they're really giving you a fit. But uh, I just wanted to holler at you. Hey, I'm recording you for a YouTube video. Uh, uh, maybe you'll be uh, live on YouTube. Go ahead. TUX, K8 MDS. I'm on the loop. Yes, I am. Uh, we'll do the experiment again here for the uh, just for the sake of the YouTube video. 
I'm going to switch over to the uh, 390 foot off center fed doublet and see if there's any difference tonight. I remember last time you said I was uh, the same or, uh, or undetectable difference. I just turned on my 12 dB of attenuation and knocked the uh, static crashes down quite a bit also on this end. I'll switch over to the 390 footer again and you can give me a comment. Okay, now I'm on the 390 foot off center fed doublet and uh, you seem to be approximately the same receive. Uh, there might have been a little bit more QSB on this antenna. How do you copy on this antenna, Adrian? Go ahead. Well, I think it's going to have to be exactly the same here. So, uh, uh, to me, it, uh, it looks the same, same before. So. Oh, very good. <laughs> Well, that's the same thing we experienced in our last contact. And uh, yes, uh, the YouTube video that I post will also be linked on my QRZ.com site. There's a YouTube video on there now of a, a mobile contact in California on 40 meters here. And uh, we'll, we're going to add you to this as soon as we get this video made and edit it a little bit and, uh, so it's not so long. We'll. Uh, We'll put it up there and you'll be able to watch it on YouTube and uh, hear yourself on there because you're, you're coming in pretty good tonight. It's too bad about the static crashes because if it, uh, if it was a clear night here, uh, you'd be a very Q5. Uh, QSL? I can't let you down. Okay, I'll tell you how to get you in the air again now. So that's, uh, it looks like it might have a uh, black baby, baby, uh, the uh, magic uh, shop there. Yeah. Uh, this way for it. And, uh, you'll be using uh, like a uh, copper strap weighing around that. Uh, it looks like it's about uh, uh, two, uh, two to three inches wide, maybe two inches or something like that. Uh, wide, that's, uh, that's the conductor for the copper strap, is that correct? That is a QSL, that's the conductor. Uh, the copper strap is three inches. Uh, wide, uh, Adrian. It's three inches wide and eight mils thick. It's eight mils thick. Eight mils is kind of a magic number to where you uh, have a thin enough copper to reduce the weight and a wide enough copper for an RF surface area of three inches on each side. And at the same time, you're not getting the IR losses because the eight mil eight mils thick is uh, is uh, thick enough to uh, uh, give you a good uh, uh, resistance or um, conductance without adding too much IR loss. Go ahead. critical there. Well, your, your signal's so good tonight, it's just too bad the static crashes are so high. Every once in a while I miss a word. Um, yeah, that's an octagon shape. Uh, it's a six foot diameter octagon uh, in average because it's probably about six foot uh, four inches from corner to corner and it's six foot octagon shape. Uh, what was the other question you asked me? Uh, uh, go ahead. Yes, well what the turns do, uh, Adrian, is it allows you to make the loop about 50% smaller than a textbook magnetic loop. A textbook magnetic loop, uh, what I'm going to call textbook, is what everybody's done over the years. It's a single conductor 
And uh, with a single conductor, you need a cert you'll get a certain inductance out of that loop. Well, this this winding, this helical winding, uh, in combination with giving you a large skin surface, gives you a larger inductor for a smaller loop. QSL. I'm going to cut this video short, but otherwise we're going to have too long of a YouTube video. Hello again. Uh, we're going to do a little experiment here to show you the uh, bandpass characteristics and the tuning mechanism uh, on the magnetic loop and explain a little bit about how this works. And uh, we'll zoom in on the uh, spectrum scope here on the 756 Pro 3. And uh, we'll tune the loop with my uh, loop controller, which turns the motorized gear gearbox on the uh, variable capacitor. So let me zoom in here a little bit on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Hello again. We're going to have a little demonstration on the uh, 80 through 30 meter magnetic loop and the bandpass characteristics and the tuning mechanism. Uh, what we're going to do is zoom in on the uh, spectrum scope here on the 756 Pro 3 and uh, tune the loop back and forth while observing the spectrum scope so you can see the bandpass characteristics and how easy it is to tune this loop and how much difference it makes when it's tuned to resonance. And uh, we'll also uh, transmit a little bit of power and uh, we'll look at that aspect also. But let me zoom in on the screen a little bit. Okay, I think I'm capturing the screen pretty good. Let me see here. Now, what we'll do is watch the center of the screen, and I will uh, rotate the uh, capacitor back and forth. And as you can see, you can see the noise level go direct right down to nothing, and it peaks up right there in the center, and watch the S-meter along with it as the noise level goes up and down on the S-meter. You get the loop tuned to resonance there. You can see how high the signal gets right in the center. And it's very easy to tune within the 40 meter band here. Once you're in the band, changing frequency is a, is a real uh, easy thing to do. We can turn the gain up a little bit with the preamp, and we'll do that once again. And you can see the bandpass noise going across the screen. And tune it back down to uh, preamp in the low position. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tune over to the 390 foot off-center to a doublet watch the noise across the screen, Look, watch how much more noise the front end of the receiver sees uh, when we're in a regular antenna versus the uh, high Q tune loop. Now there you go, now I'm in a very similar gain, the, the S meter shows almost identical to frequency, although I have bandpass noise all the way across the receiver and it does tend to overload the front end of the receiver, so uh, the loop being tuned to a small bandpass actually helps the receive characteristics. So, oh, there goes the phone, so we'll, we'll flip back over to the loop and uh, pause this for a second. Okay, we're back again for another recording. We're going to demonstrate this time focused in on the uh, VSWR meter and the power meter. We're going to transmit some low power. And of course, uh, before we get into that, we'll state that the antenna is tuned to 50 ohms at one to one across the entire design spectrum, uh, which was measured with the antenna analyzers. So the VSWR measurement or the SWR measurement is very truthful in this position. When it reads zero, the antenna is at 50 ohms, uh, plus or minus one or two ohms. Uh, so watching the meter, I'll key the transmitter and we'll watch the uh, loop controls here as we vary the frequency up and down to resonance.